If you're wondering if it's a bad idea to bottle up your emotions, ah, it's great. Do it, man. Serenity now. It's making you feel so good. Just push that stuff away and you'll be perfect. Right? Have you, I don't know if you've seen Seinfeld, it's old now, but <laughs> there's a scene in it where they start bottling up their emotions and it just blows up in their face, right? This is something that we implicitly know. Bottling our emotions is not a good idea. That's how we create unibombers and serial killers and all sorts of problems. And yet we persist in doing this over and over. Why? Why do we do it? <laughs> You know, 80 to 90% of people have not really a solid idea of what they're feeling on a regular basis. That means most of us are bottling things up. We tend to live in what I call the gray. By avoiding our uncomfortable emotions, we do not allow ourselves to feel the whole gamut of what we are capable of. There is historical and cultural reasons for this. And I have an AI platform that I use to help me identify and express my emotions in a healthy way. And I'll tell you a story about it at the end of this video. First of all, we've got to recognize our feelings are seen as weak in our culture. There's a song called The Trial by Pink Floyd, and it captures this cultural issue so perfectly. And the lyrics of the song go, feelings, there, there's a man brought before a judge in a tribunal and he says, your honor, worm your honor, this man has been brought before you for having feelings, feelings of almost a human nature. This will not do, right? It's a great song. And that captures the essence of a society that has driven feelings into the ground so that we can live in our most empirical and logical source of mind, which is the epitome of all great civilized countries, right? This is something that has come with us from a long way back. So you're fighting that when you start to say, I'm not gonna bottle my emotions. You're fighting that trend, but it's a powerful thing to fight. The second thing is reigning in your emotions. We have a story that comes from Plato Plato talks about emotions and logic as two horses pulling a carriage. Your emotional horse is this black horse that is full of just like rage and rah, very uncontrolled. And then you've got this white horse that is logic. And it's very subdued, but very reliable. And as you ride your carriage, pulling with these two horses, you have to rein in the emotional side and let logic have its way. And that's how Plato described emotions versus logic. So we have this embedded into our Western culture that our emotions must be reined in in order for us to function and deliver and do the things we wanna do. This is faulty. Plato, as brilliant as he was, said, all I know is that I know nothing. And he was wrong in this, <laughs> in this one thing. So. Learn to not rein in your emotions, learn to identify them and feel them. Third, understand how logic and emotions work together. When you can begin to see this, you can begin to really use the push and pull of emotions and logic together. They're combined, powerful. They're the ones pulling the horse, or pulling the carriage for Plato down the road, but they can do it in concert and they are meant to do it in concert. In fact, a book written by Dr. Ian McGilchrist discusses the two hemispheres of the brain. He calls it the mass, the book's name is The Master and His Emissary. And he says the emissary is logic. That is the left side of your brain. It is the piece that defines and allows us to interact with the space outside of our minds that says, hey, quickly define this, quickly define that and it allows you to make quick snap decisions that could save your life in a very, very difficult situation. But there are nuances to everything. So when you hear a stereotype, that's the quick definition. But then if you meet an individual, they're outside of that stereotype. No one is a stereotype. Everyone is an individual. And the right side of the brain is where you take the logic of what you see and you bring it back to the right side of the brain and you are capable of opening yourself to the nuances of new information. And he talks about the push and pull of these two sides of the brain. And if we do not bring our logical and defined and clearly 
um, executed sort of plans back to the right side of the brain, which then can deal with the nuance, we are missing a huge segment of possibilities of what we feel, what we can do, and how we can act in the world around us. So learn how to work them together. The fourth thing is you gotta listen to your heart and listen to your gut. Did you know that you have neurons in your heart and in your gut? There's a ton of them. And that's why you feel the pain in your heart and you feel your gut. And it's very, very interesting. And you have, you're in your head as well, right? And I have learned that when I'm making choices, if I can get a feeling of flow that comforts not only my brain, but my heart and my gut, it is a good choice. It's something that allows me then to go, oh, I can act on this. There's just kind of that rush. I think you've had, maybe I hope you've had that, where you've been trying to work through a really difficult problem and you're looking at it from all angles and trying to discover what's the solution here. And then somehow you come to this final resolution. And when it happens, when you hear it, you're like, oh my gosh. And it's like, whew. Everything is aligned. Your gut feels good, your heart feels good, your head feels good, and you're like, this is the answer. That is a real thing. Getting into the emotional side of it, not just relying on your logic and ignoring your gut and your heart, is very important to your success of learning how to deal with emotions. So, if you'll allow yourself to do this, to actually get all your things aligned, this level of introspection will give you wisdom that you have not been able to find before because you're really, really opening yourself to more than just pure logic. Pure logic is wonderful, but it has its limitations. Pure emotion is wonderful and it has its limitations. Combined, these two are powerful. The fifth thing you want to do is get out of your head and learn to feel what is happening in your body. As a culture, because we come from Plato and we come from this you know, British stiff upper lip stuff where we're singing about not having emotions, we tend to reside in our brains and we tend to just try to logic our way through everything. So get out of your head and drop into your body. Allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself to determine where do I carry this stuff in me? Where do I carry fear? Where do I carry anger? Where do I carry joy? Where do I carry sadness? All of these things that you carry within you reside in your body. You can feel them and it's your body saying, hey, listen, listen, listen. I've got information for you. It takes time to do this. I remember when I first started therapy, um, I would be asked, hey, what are you feeling? How do you feel today? And I'd say, good. And they would say, you can't say that. You have to give me a real adjective of what you feel. And they literally had to give me a sheet with a bunch of adjectives and I'd look through and kind of guess, uh, anxious? I don't know. Now I know what I feel, I know. And the cool thing is, is you can feel all sorts of things at once. You can feel fear and excitement. You can feel sadness and happiness at the same time. It's interesting. But when you learn to feel it in your body, then you begin to listen to the wisdom that it has to take to you. This takes time, so be patient with yourself. I remember when I first started using this AI platform that I was talking about, what it does is it measures the emotional resonance because all of them resonate at a certain frequency, your emotions. And it uses your, they come through your vocal cords as you speak. And so in 15 seconds, I would check in count one, two, three, four, five to 15, and then I'd get my whole emotional palette. And I was visiting my dad, he just had a massive stroke, and my whole family was gathered, we thought he was gonna die. And I looked, I checked in, I looked, and my fear was at 100%. And my brother tried it, he checked in, he looked, his fear was at 100%. And we looked at each other, and I was like, I'm not scared, are you scared? And he's like, no, I'm not scared. And then, I thought to myself, well, this platform has an 87% chance of being accurate versus my 13% chance of being right. So maybe I should get curious about what this emotion is. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna get curious about this. And I just got out of my head and I dropped into my body and tried to feel where that fear was because I didn't feel anything. And the moment I got out of my head and dropped in my body, I felt the fear. 
Man, I felt it. All of the things. You know, I, I've got a good relationship with my dad now. He, I don't want him to die. I don't want him to go. I, I want him to stick around. I want him to have a good life. I want him to continue. I wanted all these things, and I was so scared of losing them. And as I touched that and felt it, the fear released in me, and I was able to let it go. And then through that week, it was a very tense time, my whole family was gathered. I have 10 brothers and sisters. I'm one of 11. And we were all there together, and we're all very different people, but we're all good. And the, ten the intensity of it causes problems, right, to rise. And people are trying to hang on and trying to be good to each other, but the intensity was there. And at the end of the week, my brother, he said to me, and my brother, he's the leader, right? He's the leader of our family, and we all know it, and he keeps everybody in line in a good way, in a nice way. But he himself was struggling to do it that week. And he comes up to me at the end of the week, and he says, I don't know what is up with you, but man, you were great this week. You were really calm. You were in good shape. And I was like, huh, because I didn't feel like I was great, but I had dealt with the fear, and so it wasn't bleeding out in any way. And I could see when people were starting to react and get scared, and I was like, oh yeah, I get it. I understand, because I've had that fear too, and I was able to help. And that is the power of really, truly understanding your emotions and allowing them to be felt and drawn into. So if you want to be powerful, Learn to access all your emotions. Don't be a unabomber. Don't be that guy that stuff, stuffs it down, right? Stick around, I got another video coming up. Turning fear into power. You might like it. I'm James, thanks for joining me.